as a prophetic message from the Lord. I, the Lord, have exhorted my people to keep on standing in faith once they have done all they can to resist the enemy. Ephesians 6, 13. But sometimes the trial is so severe and so long and prayer support is so scarce that the floods of the enemy's attack knock the saint off of his or her feet. It is written that a righteous man might fall seven times, yet that individual will be able, through my enablement, to get right back up on their feet. Proverbs 24:16. The fox is in the hen house, using false guilt techniques to pry money out of poor believers because the church is way too chicken to name names and expose the con men in their midst. Contrary to Christ's own commandment in Matthew 18:17 and Paul's teaching in 1 Timothy 5:20, wealthy wolves of deceit have broken into the sheep pen while hireling watchmen cheer them on in the name of so-called love and submission to authority. And so few ever bother to investigate the reason they feel this person is automatically entitled to unquestioning obedience. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 Because there is no discernment in the church, or it's suppressed out of fear, the wily church leader knows he can get away with spiritual murder and enrich himself at the expense of the ignorant and naive people populating his pews. Once these wicked preachers gain a foothold in charismatic circles, none of the flock is spared. Acts 20:29. 20, Only those who have the foresight and wisdom to get out of apostate prosperity churches are spared their dangerous brainwashing. Revelations 18:4. Prosperity peddlers accuse needy saints of being poor because of lack of faith or sin in their life. But Paul went through rough periods when he went without the basics. 1 Corinthians 4.11 And why did Paul suffer long stretches without enough to eat or without warm things to wear? Because of the selfishness of my people. The rich Corinthians boasted that they reigned as kings. 1 Corinthians 4.8 With more than enough to get by. They could have supported Paul willingly, just like Peter and James lived of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9, 5-14 Instead, the money which should have gone to feed Paul and other poor believers was withheld by affluent Corinthian believers who didn't care enough to be my hands extended. This principle of supporting full-time gospel ministers is twisted by unscrupulous men of the cloth to justify living high on the hog while those who support them do without the bare necessities of life. Paul taught equality of well-being in the body of Christ where no one enriches himself at the expense of others who have less. 2 Corinthians 8, 13 through 15. But today you have the have-nots giving out of their need to plant a seed to satisfy some preacher's greed for luxuries they could easily live without. Paul only asked for the privilege of eating and having his legitimate needs met. 1 Corinthians 9, 4. Yes, Paul had a right to eat. Even Jesus said so. Luke 10, 7. Jesus said food and drink was the wages a preacher ought to expect for his work, not tithes and compulsory offerings taken from the flock regularly as a religious ritual. This notion that you must conduct an offertory service each and every time the saints meet together is a leftover lie from the great harlot church system of men. Jesus only asked his people to give to the poor and never for himself to buy luxuries with. But today's unprincipled preachers 
want much more than the basic necessities of life. See, 1 Timothy 6, 8. They used to dream of being millionaires. Now they claim they've got the right to live like billionaires at the expense of the poor. Rich preachers would never dream of seeing themselves or their spoiled wives dirty their own hands working at a real job to earn their own daily bread. The tithing curse of Malachi 3, 8 through 10 is wrongfully and sinfully applied by seminary educated preachers to poor church folks even though tithing was only given to the nation of Israel by Moses. Leviticus 27, 34. And this message in Malachi was directed only to the nation of Israel, the sons of Jacob, and the sons of Levi, the priestly tribe of the nation of Israel in particular. Malachi 1, 1, 2, 1, and verse 7, and chapter 3, verses 3 and 6. This message had nothing at all to do with collecting 10% of gross wages and everything to do with keeping groceries in my house. Church, tithing is a gross perversion of my word. The backslidden apostate priesthood of Israel were dead wrong to rob the poor widow of her food money in Mark 12, 42 through 44. Jesus merely commented on the widow's action. He did not recommend it as an example for others to follow or praise it. Just two verses before the widow put in her mites, Jesus condemned religious leaders filching money the poor needed to support their families with. Mark 12, 40. The book of Malachi is not my message to the church of Jesus Christ. Malachi, whose name means messenger, was my messenger to Israel only. Malachi 1.1, 1, 1, Psalms 147, verse 20. When you read a letter, you first find out who it is addressed to. It is a disgusting sin in my sight to accuse a Christian in the middle of a bad trial that they are robbing God just because they don't follow this demonic monetary church tithing law. That is spiritual abuse and bullying of the worst sort. The Roman Catholic Church came up with church tithing on money way back in the Middle Ages. This bad fundraising doctrine was never taught by Christ or any apostle to his church. Yet that's one way rich, greedy, luxury-loving preachers tell my people who are having a hard time that God is cursing them for not forking over protection money to their religious racket. Some of these reprobates wear several rings on each hand. Some of them wear expensive watches and designer clothes which need several closets to house them. While many of my dear people aren't even sure they'll still have a roof over their head next week. Some religious hucksters own several mansions apiece. Some of them have had several wives apiece because these preachers are so spoiled rotten they have crossed out the cross of Christ and made the almighty dollar bill the symbol of their new prosperity gospel of greed. Some say this new gospel is so deeply entrenched after about a century of it that not even the real God can uproot it. But my word promises that every tree that bears bad fruit is destined for the fire. Matthew 7, 19. The axe is laid to the roots of this rotten tree of prosperity, greed, gospel garbling garbage. Matthew 3, 10. It's every man for himself on the sinking ship of the foolish church, which is running after a different gospel and another Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11.4, Galatians 1.6. This false faith is built on the shifting sand of deceit. The atmosphere in these places is so different from the sharing, caring love, which I saw in the newborn church, where no one lacked, 
for the necessities of life because Christians loved one another in practical ways on a consistent, not sporadic, basis. Acts 2, 42 through 47, and chapter 4, 34 and 35. While the congregation is rebuking the poor just for being poor, the preacher is rebuking everyone for not putting more in his velvet bags so he can take an extra vacation or buy an extra car for the glory of God. The flashiest showmen do their mesmerizing carnival routine on the stage. They take advantage of the fact that people have been knocked off their feet by circumstances beyond their control and can see no way out of their predicament except a miracle. Humans are weak. When you reach a point of extreme desperation, you cannot think straight or make responsible decisions anymore. You are far, far likelier to do something very rash or stupid and suffer for it afterward as a consequence. This mega monster preacher will accuse you of not loving God or himself enough unless you by faith dump your rent money into his collection and trust God to multiply it a hundredfold, pressed down and stacked high to the sky. What a vile, stinking lie, saying, I bless this bastardized gambling doctrine. I told you to pay your debts if you've got the means to do so. Proverbs 3.28 I feed the birds of the air every day, free of charge. I provide nests for birds and animals, free of charge. I pour rain out of the sky and provide sunshine for humanity, free of charge. Now, if I love monkeys and mice enough to feed them, free of charge, then why do you think I charge my own dear children 10% of their wages to feed and care for them. Jesus taught you to ask your loving heavenly dad for your daily bread. Matthew 6, 11. Buzzards feed off of dead carrion and dying animals. They strip the bones bare and they eat up all the flesh, leaving nothing but a dried up skeleton behind. The meanest Christian crooks not only fleece my flock down to the bear's skin, they gobble up everything the poor believer has. They even rob him of spiritual treasures, the treasure of the knowledge of who he or she is in Christ, a king and a priest. First Peter 2, 5 and verse 9, And a child of the Most High God, of high standing, an heir and joint heir with Christ himself. Romans 8, 16 through 17. Yet preachers have cashed in on the ignorance of my people. They've even uprooted sound doctrines from the hearts of my people and subverted their souls to make them believe a lie. God only blesses those who plant a seed to meet their need, and sowing always means money, while the good old gospel seed of the true word of God is ignored because it doesn't Provide a fancier car. Millions of poor Christians have been made destitute after gambling away what they needed to survive on. Millions more shipwrecked souls have renounced their faith in me because of these greedy liars who work wickedness in my name. Matthew 7, 22 and 23. These evil snakes don't care how many souls end up in hell because of their greed for mammon. Evil preachers literally sell my people to Satan as they lead them down to hell by causing them to fall out of the grace of God into a works gospel which cannot save or maintain a soul in salvation. I say unto those who preach damnable heresies in my name, the angels of heaven and even the devils of hell tremble at the holy name of Jesus, but you have trampled it underfoot, worse than Judas or Ananias and Sapphira ever did. You have made my holy name to stink throughout the whole earth 
with your damnable, filthy, abominable lies. Instead of feeding the poor and caring for the weak and the elderly, you have robbed them of their social security money they needed to survive on. You have turned the word of the Lord into a scratch card where it's a crapshoot whether or not your gift to bless the Lord, yourselves, yields dividends for the gambling believer. Many have gone to their graves hungry, sick, and discouraged because you coveted the cash of poor people to buy more Rolexes, yachts, mansions, art treasures, and jewelry. By claiming a sacrificial one-time gift to the Lord to spend on your own lusts, you, in effect, claim to be the Lord of all those duped people. When they see you, they think they see God, and I count this as idolatry you trick them into committing. You vile preachers of greed have planted a terrible, soul-damning, stumbling block before the eyes of my people because idolatry is a fatal sin when it is not repented of. The blind are leading the blind to eternal perdition because their faith is in men of deceit instead of the living God who gives his people freely without cost to them all things to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6.17 Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I shall strip you bare of all those abominable treasures you've accumulated through greed and preaching deceitful, dirty doctrines of demons. You yell about moral decay in America and elsewhere, yet you repeatedly divorce and remarry and commit many other abominable acts of lust and carnal wickedness you try to cover up. You put on a good holiness show, yelling and screaming about lazy saints in Zion who aren't willing to take a job. And yet you're the biggest, fattest welfare recipients of all by far. Many Ahabs and Jezebels will be outside pushing shopping carts someday looking in dumpsters for their daily bread. They created both literal and spiritual poverty for millions of down-and-out believers who had no one to pick them up and who were driven to the last standing place and a mighty gust of wind blew them down on their back again and again. And the vultures and the buzzards came out to polish off the dead and the dying. My church has been bewitched by lies and cheap circus tricks. Millions have been so deeply deceived that they will never ever in this life or even in the world to come wake up and believe the real truth of the gospel. Even when confronted by all the facts, people believe only what they want to believe. Woe unto those who are spiritually destroyed by falling into error but seven times more woe unto those who lied to them and led them into that deadly error.